Hey everybody, I'm Adrian Bustamante and welcome to Food Deconstructed. This week we're deconstructing the American favorite cheeseburgers and this recipe is going to be a cheeseburger pancakes with an avocado and ranch cream sauce. Now, the first thing we're gonna start with is our cream sauce. It's really simple to make, you can do this at home. And obviously this sticks with the essence of the cheeseburger or what usually goes inside of, on top of a cheeseburger anyway. We're gonna start with our ranch dry mix here. Two avocados, we're using two small ones but you can use one larger one at home. A lime, we're gonna actually use the juice along with the zest or the outside of the lime as well. Use some milk to actually even out the consistency of our sauce as well is our sour cream, because this is gonna be the overall base of our sauce. So what we're gonna do is add our sour cream, and we're gonna also place our ranch mix in here. Now this is 16 ounces of sour cream and just one packet. And we're just gonna bring this together. You should see a slight change in color, and you'll see that ranch mix kind of blend inside. You start seeing little specks from the ranch mix kind of mixing in with your sour cream. Once that's all mixed together, which shouldn't take long at all, we start adding some of our other ingredients. We're going to start with our lime. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to get a little zest out of this first. Now all you're going to do is just rub your lime just gently over the zester. You'll start seeing pieces of it come off. And you can kind of Roll your lime around and make sure you're getting as much off as you can. You don't want to use a whole lot, just enough to add just a little bit of extra flavor in there. All right, good enough. Back inside. Now, give it a nice little roll. Increase the amount of juice we get out of this. And then just juice this lime. One. And then two. Next up is our avocados. Now, we've done this before, but an easy way that you can cut into an avocado at home, you start there, slowly roll your knife around the edge of the avocado. It should just twist off nice and easy. Now, take the pit out, take your knife, give it a nice little knock to it. It'll stick inside, quick twist, and you're good. Now, I'm just going to go along the edge. This should be, if it's ripe enough, you should be able to get just a spoon and just spoon the avocado out. And we'll mash that in here in a second. Same thing with the other half. There we go. And now the second avocado. Should be able to scoop off nice and easy if it's ripe enough. And there. Now I'm gonna take my whisk again. Just kind of mash the avocado down a little bit before I start whisking. Just try and get all that Lime juice and that avocado all inside here. Now the avocado is gonna to add to the creaminess of this sauce as well. And that's where the milk comes in. Because otherwise, if we don't have this milk, it's just gonna be a really thick cream sauce. And we wanna thin it out a little bit to be able to drizzle over our pancakes. There we go. Start to see the color turn a little bit. Hint of green popping up in there. All right, now. It's actually not as thick as I was thinking it was gonna be, so we probably won't need as much milk. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep whisking and slowly incorporate my milk. This way I know how much more I need to add or how little. Still some avocado pieces in there, so don't be afraid to kind of mash them down and whisk some more. Now you can also do this at home in a food processor if you'd like, which might make it a little bit easier on your arm or your wrist, but Today, we're using a whisk. Now, I like the consistency of that. Maybe a little bit more. It's still thick. I don't want it to be too runny or watery, but that should work for us. If I need to kind of add a little bit more milk later, I will. So I'm going to put this off to the side. You might want to keep that refrigerated for yourself since you're using some sour cream products and a little bit of milk in there. You don't want to sit it out for too long and have that go bad on you. All right, now we're gonna start on our cheeseburger pancake batter. <laughs> so we're gonna start off by actually cooking our beef with some onion and some celery. 
So we're gonna take our beef, and put a little bit of olive oil in here. Now this is 80-20 beef, 80% lean meat, 20% fat. Now, those will range depending on what you want. So obviously the more fat you get, the more flavor you get. So this is kind of a happy medium, but you can go leaner, you can go fattier, depending on what you want at home. Add that celery, add those onions. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook this meat down until there's no more pink inside. And then we'll start working on the rest of this piece of the recipe. While that's cooking, I can actually add together two things just to have them ready for ourselves. I'm take this bowl, I'm gonna take my all-purpose flour, roughly about two cups, and some baking soda. It's about four teaspoons. I'm just gonna mix these together. You can use a whisk at home, but I'll just use my hands for now. Set that off to the side, because we will use that later. And this meat is still cooking, so I'm gonna let it do its thing, and we'll come back and start adding the rest of our ingredients to it. All right, now this meat's just about done cooking. I'm just gonna make sure that we break these pieces up as small as we can, because again, this has gotta mix in with our batter, so we don't want large chunks of meat if we don't have to. There we go. But the pink is just about cooked out of it. Now we're gonna add one can of condensed tomato soup. Some celery seed. Worcestershire sauce. And a little bit of hot sauce for some kick. Along with some more salt, which I've already added in earlier. And some pepper. So I'm just mixing it together to combine, not really worrying about it cooking into each other or anything like that. Just wanna get that soup mixed in with everything, as well as the other ingredients that I've just added. Once that's mixed together, I'm gonna pull it off the heat. I'm gonna let this cool down a little bit before I add some cheddar cheese to it. All right, that should be mixed in. Let that sit just a little bit. Now while that's cooling, before I add the cheese, I'm gonna bring back in my flour and baking soda. So we're gonna start mixing everything together. Now I'm gonna add one egg to this mixture, as well as one cup of milk. I'm just gonna whisk it together here. And you'll start to see it thicken up immediately. So it's gonna clump up on you, but that's okay, because we're gonna be adding this soup meat mixture to it, kind of make sure it loosens up and thins out for us so it becomes more of a pancake batter that you used to seeing. We're just gonna keep whisking, make sure it's all mixed in. I may have to use some of my hands here, which you may have to do at home as well. If you wanna use a spatula instead of a whisk, that might be a better idea as well. All right, all right now this cooled off, I'm gonna add my cheese. Maybe about a cup of cheese, cheddar. If you wanna use different cheese at home, feel free. I'm a big cheddar fan. So I'll mix it in there. It should start melting immediately because that meat's still gonna be fairly warm. And once it's all mixed together, we're gonna combine it to this. All right. Now again, when combining it to this batter, we're gonna see how thin it gets. If it gets more pancake battery, then fine. If not, add a little bit more milk to it to kind of thin it out. There it goes. See it start to loosen up. Just make sure it all gets mixed in there. And as you can already tell, this is gonna be a really savory take on the normal pancake. Thinning out just a little bit more for ourselves. Add just a tad bit more milk. And that's gonna be good. You'll notice this is gonna be a thicker pancake batter than you may normally make at home that can be comes out of a box from a grocery store if you don't make it from scratch. All right, so we should be good there. Let's get our pan ready. All 
Now, to grease the pan, we're going to use a little bit of bacon drippings. We have about a quarter cup here. I'm just going to make sure the whole pan is nice and coated. Makes it easier to flip these little pancakes. Now, depending on the size of the griddle you have at home, you can make whatever size pancakes you want. Here, we're going to make silver dollar pancakes. A little more fun, and that's what I have room for. All right, now it's time to ladle into our griddle. I'm going to try and get this to be as round as I possibly can so it comes out a nice silver dollar shape. And let's see how this goes. All right, now I'm going to let that sit like you would a normal pancake. You'll start seeing bubbles come up through the pancake and that's when you know it's getting close to being done. You can check it to see if it's ready to flip at that point, if it's nice and brown on one side. And if it is, give it a little flip, cook the other side, and you're ready to eat. So I'm going to let it do its thing. I'm going to give it a nice flip here in a second and then we'll start plating. All right, the bubbles are forming around you as the pancake, so now I'm going to give it a little flip. Be careful with your pancake, you don't want to destroy anything. Now, since this isn't a normal pancake, it's not going to be the normal brown or golden brown color. You still will see that golden brown that you want, but you might see, just because of the other ingredients, a little bit more of that, that brown you get when you, I guess, brown meat on a pan. So you'll start seeing that on the outside as well. So we give it that flip, we'll let the other side cook maybe about a minute or so, maybe less, keep an eye on it. You can make these at home and you actually can keep them warm in a low oven as well. So if you want to make a bunch of them at one time, and keep them for everybody if you're making a party or if you have a large breakfast group or maybe even a large dinner group, you can do that as well. Our cheeseburger pancake is off the griddle as well as our other silver dollar pancakes we have piled up here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start plating this, see how it tastes. So we're gonna take our avocado and ranch cream sauce. I'm just gonna dab it over the top here. All right, garnish it with a little cilantro. All right, let's see how this tastes, huh? Hmm. A lot better than I was expecting. It's actually a really good combination of a pancake with a cheeseburger. It reminds me a lot of a, a Hot Pocket. It has that cheesy meat filling, and then that outer layer is, you know, kind of almost pastry-like. So it does have, you know, its qualities that reminds me of a cheeseburger, obviously the bun, and then the meat and the cheese. And the avocado ranch cream sauce definitely does give it a little bit of a kick at the end, too. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out, and I'm not sick yet, so I think everything's gonna work out just fine. So uh, stay tuned for our next recipe, the cheeseburger cocktail.